All right, this is just an example of what your finished project could look like. I did standard algorithm since it's what most people are used to. Like I said, this is an example. This is something that I made. I just wanted you to have a picture of what your finished project should look something like. And of course, you're going to put your own touch in it. It's going to be your own backgrounds and colors and fonts and of course you have a completely different multiplication method so that will also be different so this is standard algorithm columns the classic way to multiply and I put my name down here you would put your group member names next page is all a little bit about your multiplication method so I would present the standard algorithm for multiplication is a method for multiplying that requires you to write one number above the other so that the digits line up. That's where the columns in my title came from. You multiply each digit by every other digit, carrying any tens place values over to the next digit. This is done in a specific order, which I will show you on the next page. The standard algorithm has been around a really long time. It's hard to pin down where it started because it's been used in America for so long. I tried to ask Google where it started and Google was like, I don't know. I can tell you how to do it. But I definitely saw evidence of it being around as far back as at least the 1400s. So it's been around for ages. Next I'm going to show you a little bit about how it works. I'm going to do this with an example. So you multiply each digit by all the others in a very specific order. And you're going to carry any tens place digits. And when you move to the next line, you move left one digit. So let me show you that with an example. I also could link to a video. This is a video link, but I'm not going to do that for this presentation. That was just an option for you guys. So. I start with my bottom right corner digit and I'm going to multiply by the lowest place value digit to the highest place value digit and I'm going to carry any tens place values. So for example, 6 times 4 is 24. So 2 in 24 is a tens place value so I'm going to carry that over and leave the 1 down here. Then I move to my next number. 4 times 4 is 16. So I have 16 tens plus the two tens I already carried makes 18 tens. Carry the one. And four times one is four plus that one that I carried makes five. Now I'm moving over to my tens place. So I'm going to move to the left. I could just move to the left or I could put an X as a place value holder, but I'm going to put a zero because 10 times anything, any whole number, adds a zero to the end. So that's what this zero marks, is that I'm moving to my tens place. 8 times 6 is 48, carry the 4. Cross that out because that was last time. 8 times 4 is 32, and 4 is 36. Cross that out. And 8 times 1 is 8 and 3 makes 11. And then I add 4 and 0 is 4. 8 and 8 is 16. Carry the 1. That would be 12. So I get 12,264. Or a longer example where we have 3 digits by 3 digits. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. That was my 1's place. I'm moving to my 10's place, so I'm going to add a 0 for my 10's place. 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. Oops. See, I jumped the gun. Now I move to my 100's place. 100 has two zeros, so I'm going to move two places. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now I can add 8 and nothing is 8. 4 and 6 and nothing is 10. 8 and 2 is 10, and 3 is 
13 and 1 is 14. 6 and 2 is 8. 2. So it's 28,408. My next slide, we talk about why does it work. And it works because you end up multiplying the top number by the place value parts of the bottom number and then add up for the total product. So I'm using the example from the last place page to show you. 146 times 84, we already solved that. I'm going to go ahead and put in that zero that I talked about last time. So what I'm doing is four 146's and then I'm doing 80 146's. That's what that zero comes from. The 10 so this is eight tens. So you get a zero for the tens place. So four hundred and forty sixes plus eighty hundred and forty sixes makes eighty four hundred and forty sixes. So what I find out one hundred and forty six times four and add it to one hundred and forty six times eighty, I get my answer. So when we multiply by ten, we end up just adding a zero. That's why we move to the left one place. It's for the tens place zero. And what we're doing for this number is just we're breaking it down into parts. Four ones, eight tens. If there were any hundreds, then we would have a separate product for the hundreds. And then we add all of our place value products together to get our final answer. That's why this works. Okay. Next, I would lead you through an example. I would have you try this on your paper. So, for example, and everybody's going to be doing the same problem, 24 times 18. So, it's not that you're not going to know the answer, because you will. I want you to show me that you can solve it using the new method that you learned. And you will have to walk your classmates through some of these, because seeing it twice might not be enough. So. I would say, okay guys, what's our first step? We multiply the lower right by the upper right. 8 times 4 is 32. I have to carry that. Can't have two digits in a one digit place. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 and 3 is 19. Now, I did 8 times 24. Next, I need to do 10 times 24. So I'm going to put a 0 because I'm multiplying by 10. And one time, I mean, 10 times 24 would be 240, so this checks out. But we do 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 2 is 2. And then we add our partial products together. We add 8 times 24 to 10 times 24. 2 and nothing is 2. 9 and 4 is 13. And that makes 4. So our answer is 432. And then you could do a check. How many people got that answer? Uh, how many people felt comfortable using the method? Thumbs up, thumbs down. There's lots of ways you could do it. Then you talk about advantages of your method. My method is pretty quick. It doesn't take much space to do. I've seen some others that take a lot of space. Most people are pretty familiar with this method already because that's what a lot of people learn when they're in school. So those are some advantages. There's also some disadvantages though. This one is pretty confusing and it can lead easily to mistakes because you have to remember to carry the tens place numbers and to add what you carry to the next product. And you have to remember to go to the next line and move to the tens place space. You know, you move left one space, fill in a zero because you're multiplying by a tens place number instead of a ones place number. You have to remember to do that. And if you have three digits, you have to move another time on the next line. It, it can get pretty confusing. So. It can be pretty easy to make mistakes with this method if you aren't 100% comfortable with it. 
and then I would just have my sources listed. Eventually you guys will learn to do these fancy bibliographies that have titles and dates and all kinds of things on them, but for right now, I just want you to credit that you got this information from another source. It didn't come out of your own head. It's just polite. Make sure also that when you're making these projects that you don't just copy and paste words from the internet. Put it in your own words. There's two reasons. It's ethical to put it in your own words. It's fair to the person who originally wrote it because when you just take their work it's called plagiarism or copying and that's not fair. And also when you have to put it in your own words it helps you to understand it better. And the goal of this project is that you will understand multiplication better. So to that end, please make sure that you are quoting your sources and putting things into your own words.